Okay, so uh, thank you for coming. Uh, today I'm going to present on uh, improving crop productivity using innovative agricultural technologies. So I think uh, nowadays, uh, as Dr. Ronil was mentioning, you know, uh, because uh, there was a or there is a transformation is going on. You know, um, uh, especially in Asia, our purchasing power is in, uh, increasing. Okay, so in 60s, 70s, you know, uh, many people, uh, they cannot afford to buy. So if you see, you know, our forefather dish, so their dish was mainly based on uh, carbohydrate rice. So full amount of rice, little bit vegetables if it is available, dal, okay? But that situation has changed now, so uh, we can buy now. So if our purchasing power is increasing, that means when we are getting more money, then the, accordingly the food habit also change. Okay, so from carbohydrate now we are moving towards fish protein, animal protein, okay? And then, uh, so now also uh, we are not only concerned about food security, we are also concerned about nutrition security as well. <coughs> so this uh, talk, of which I will be briefly uh, presenting today, actually that was one of the uh, project uh, we have done, uh, funded from USAID, uh, especially uh, in, uh, in uh, Asia, South and Southeast, uh, the productivity is the problem, okay? So I'm not talking about Japan, Korea, uh, China, and to some extent India. Uh, most of the other countries, even in Thailand, if you talk about rice, right? So the highest production, which is from Australia, they produce 12 ton per hectare. But in, uh, in uh, Thailand, the average production is only 2.4 ton per hectare which is better in Vietnam, uh, to some extent China, Japan, Korea, but in other countries in Bangladesh, you know, uh, Bangladesh is still better than Thailand. In Laos, Cambodia, so the productivity is very low. Uh, and it is also true for Nepal. So <clears throat> the reason is, you know, the farmers, uh, they cannot afford to buy because basically they are uh, smallholder farmers. Uh, they are resource poor, so they do not have much money to invest uh, on their crops. <clears throat> so this is the main problem. So shortage of innovative technology in rural Bangladesh, Cambodia and Nepal. So these are the three targeted countries. So and then this is also true in many other countries in Asia, okay? So the, the farmers, they need to, uh, they want to increase the productivity because they have to feed their family. And then do, they do not have other support. Maybe very small area of land, which you can see that uh, they have on an average uh, 0.8 or 0.7 per hectare, okay? So this is a very small piece of land. So their main intention is to maximize uh, the income from that small piece of land, okay? But at the same time, they do not have much money uh, to invest, you know, and without invest, you do not think about uh, income. So that is a vicious cycle is going on. So overall, you know, we have seen that uh, the production is low, okay? And then they become food insecure, and at the same time, nutritional insecure, and all the problems, you know, we are seeing nowadays with many people. So, and then at the same time, you know, uh, when they uh, cannot sell the product outside to the market, you know, mostly, you know, they have to depend for their own food purpose. So, and then ultimately, it, this comes uh, to the poor livelihoods, okay? So, to address this problem, you know, uh, <clears throat> Yeah, so to address this problem, so uh, there was a project funded from USAID just to see that, you know, uh, some kind of uh, innovative technologies, whether it could help. Because 
Yesterday I was also talking about, you know, some of the technologies. We have many technologies available. But the thing is, you know, as long as the project continues three, four years, so we have farmers, whoever, so they use those kind of technologies. But as soon as the project fades away, the technologies also fades away. The farmers, they do not want to use. What is the main reason? Because in most of the cases, you know, those technologies, they are not very user friendly. Okay, either you need some kind of technical knowledge or you need to invest some money to buy those products. So that's why those technologies doesn't help, you know, in most of the cases. So, and then that was the idea that whether some of the technologies, you know, we could provide, you know, in, in, especially in, in Asia, in excluding Korea, you know, Japan and China, so we believe that you know Thailand and India they are technologically rich in many agricultural aspects. Okay, so and then that's what you know our idea was uh, to transfer those technologies from Thailand and India to do those technology as such deficient countries. Maybe they have technologies, but maybe they are not using in a proper way. So that was basically the technology transfer idea. Okay, in Bangladesh, Cambodia, and Nepal. Okay, so I will not go in details uh, about those technologies. Okay, so we have, uh, there are many technologies as I have said available in the, in the market. And if you see in Thailand, in, in India, full lots of technologies. And not all technology can be equally applicable to all countries. So it depends, okay. And based on the need, so we have selected some of the uh, technologies uh, which are innovative. Uh, less expensive, uh, user friendly. So one of such technologies uh, we have found is uh, soil solarization. Okay, so soil solarization simply means you know to increase the temperature of the soil because inside the soil we have harmful bacteria, the similar in the food as well. Okay, and then we have also harmful fun fungus or fungi, so which are also harmful for the crops. And we also have many wheat species, seeds, okay? So which also uh, gives pressure to the main crop, okay? So the main idea, if we could increase the temperature of the soil, so many of those bacteria, those fungi, and those seeds, they die. So that was the main idea, okay? And so how we increase the temperature? The simple way, you know, uh, with this uh, uh, plastic, Okay, so this plastic. So uh, many in Western countries, this is a very you know useful um, technology. So they are using a lot. Okay, so especially for the organic or low external input agriculture. So you cannot use any chemicals. So this is uh, one of the way. So if you ask that yes, whether 100% cure is there? No. No, there is no 100% cure because you know this is uh, some bacteria, some fungi, and some wood species will die, but there will be many. But the idea is we also do not want to kill everything, right? So in a mutually beneficial way, okay? So for the main idea before planting the seed, for example, if you are uh, growing high value crops, so for rice, no, there is uh, uh, not much help because you will be using maybe uh, 10 hectare of rice. So that will be too much expensive, right? So we are talking about, you know, some of the high value crops. Uh, if farmers, they want to grow because rice is mainly for four or five months. And other than that, if farmers, they want to grow some high value vegetables, okay? Who is the farmers they're growing actually in Nepal, in Bangladesh, in Cambodia, you know, mainly for you know, uh, export purpose or uh, 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 selling to the, you know, big uh, uh, industries or hotels, okay, or uh, metropolitan cities. So what uh, we do actually, uh, we use plastic uh, and then before planting the high value crops, so it remains to the for soil actually, to the field for four to six weeks, okay. And then what it does, you know, 
So because we are very rich in solar energy, right? So during those time, solar energy falls here, and then it increases the temperature inside that you know, uh, plastic film. So and then in most of the cases, there experiments has also been done. They have uh, seen that, uh, shown that. Yeah. So as high as 50 degree centigrade temperature could be possible inside that plastic film. And then they are saying that, you know, uh, this kind of fungi, bacteria, and uh, nematodes, uh, they die. Okay. So, but as I said before, this is not a complete cure. Okay. There may be some other uh, fungi, bacteria, or nematodes, they will survive. But in most of the cases, you know, they have seen that it gives a very, very beneficial uh, result, okay? So, and then uh, there are also limitations of this technology as well because we are using plastic and then now we are also uh, want to get rid of plastic. So, uh, disposal of plastic is a problem here, okay? And then uh, uh, if you do it well, so you can use for uh, maximum for two, three times, okay? So this is one of the uh, major limitations of using soil solarization. But if you go to, you know, uh, in Thailand, especially in Chiang Mai, where they produce many high value vegetable crops from asp asparagus to so many other things, so they use this technology a lot. Okay? Okay, so this is uh, some of the field in Nepal. Uh, we provided this uh, uh, plastic, but they did not use it in a proper way. So you have, if you are using uh, this technology, so there are some uh, guidelines you have to follow. But that's what I'm saying. No, it is not very easy to convince the farmers, or if you tell them to do in a proper way, maybe they are not doing in a proper way. So sometimes we blame the technology. Oh, it is not working. Maybe the farmers they are not using in a proper way. So that's what we have found. Yeah, there are uh, several steps of soil solarization, but the idea I, I have already uh, told you. And then, the, the second technology, which uh, we have seen a very good result with, again, with the plastic mulching. Okay, so mulching normally uh, is, is not a new practice, actually. You know, if you go to rural India, rural Bangladesh, you'll be seeing that farmers, you know, they use uh, either rice straw or in many cases water hyacinth okay so for covering the soil and there is an advantage because if the soil is bare if there is no cover the sunlight falls directly and then there will be lots of water loss through evaporation so and then you know if you go to the field also you will be seeing that there are many different types of weeds which we do not want in the field they are also growing so to suppress those weed population and to conserve the moisture because nowadays uh, it's a big issues going on you know how we could minimize uh, the water use so the main purpose <coughs> is to suppress weed and to conserve water in crop okay because most of the you know uh, water we are using for crop production so this is one of the way you know we could conserve moisture inside the soil Okay, so this is for those one of my uh, PhD students uh, from Bangladesh. So he actually worked uh, on this uh, technology. So it's a big project in three uh, different regions of Bangladesh. So we have uh, uh, selected 20 farmers uh, from one uh, region. So altogether we have 60 farmers who have used this technology. And at the same time, you can also see here so side by side, we have also prepared the, uh, the fields where we did not use this plastic mulching. Just to compare, you know, uh, that whether that technology really helps, not in the experimental field, but in the farmer's field. And it was very difficult job, you know. So Ferdus knows all the story, how to convince the farmers, because, you know, uh, whatever we do in lab, in experimental plot so we do it so we always get better result but whether if that goes to the farmers whether we get the similar results so that is the main challenge actually okay so 
the bottom line is yes, we have done that. You know, in the Palmer Street, uh, supported from USA, and then you can see that you know uh, two side by side with plastic uh, mulching and without plastic mulching. And then Ferdus has also recorded uh, <coughs> data, okay, on different parameters. Yeah. So you can see that you know many farmers side by side. Uh, so this is cauliflower. Okay, we have done in cauliflower, in tomato, you know, in cucumber. So uh, in different districts. Okay. So here some of the you know results uh, Fredus has uh, gathered or collected. So the main thing is you know uh, <coughs> uh, in one region in Bangladesh, Rajbari, he has found that there was 20% yield increase, okay? So over those plots which the farmers does not use the plastic mulch, okay? So simple 20% uh, yield improvement was there in case of uh, cauliflower in uh, one particular region, okay? And then he has also collected, uh, calculated the gross margin, okay? And he has found that almost $700 per hectare farmer could earn extra. Okay, and these data they are coming from exactly the farmer's field, so nothing to do with the research plots. And then the same <coughs> experiment uh, conducted uh, in tomato. So previous uh, data was from cauliflower. So this is from another location, uh, using uh, plastic mulching with tomato. And he has also found almost 18% yield improvement. Uh, the plots where uh, farmers they have used plastic mulching. Okay, so the data are coming from 20 farmers mean here. And then a uh, tomato is you know little bit more expensive, so that's why <coughs> uh, the earnings also almost uh, 1,100 U US dollar. The farmers uh, generated more per hectare. Okay. Yeah, so the same problem here also, you know, uh, disposal of the plastic. But whatever we have realized, you know, if the farmers, uh, they manage it in a proper way, so they can use this plastic at least for two, three times, right? Yeah, two, three times. And then uh, we have also did a, you know, a group discussion with the farmers in three regions. And then the, all the farmers, uh, they, they're actually basically happy using this, you know, kind of uh, plastic mulching. Okay. Yeah. So this plastic mulching, whatever I have shown, uh, the data are from Bangladesh, but the same project, you know, also uh, conducted in uh, Cambodia. Although we could not uh, generate data as such because the farmers is very difficult to work in Cambodia. That's what we have found. You know, we could not. Although we spent uh, how much? Almost one hundred some dollar in Cambodia, but I do not think we get hundred data. So very difficult uh, to work. Is there anyone from Cambodia? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's uh, very difficult. Very difficult. You know. So they have the mindset. Yeah. He will change. He will change. Okay. So that's good actually. So it's a secret. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and the one lesson I learned uh, working with Cambodia that we have to select very carefully the NGO because in each country we have one government organization as well as one NGO. Okay, so that was very difficult for the NGO. If you have people like us, there is no difficulty. Yes, yes. Yeah. So that's what we produce better graduates so they go to their country and improve the situation. Yeah, these are some of the pictures. Uh, actually, you know, uh, I could say that out of three countries, Bangladesh uh, is the best data we, we, we have. The very systematic way they have done the experiments, very systematic way collected data. So that's what I said in, 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 uh, in Thailand. This is one of the pictures. You can see the plot, very organized. So Chiang Mai. Okay, everything is very organized, you know, very clean, so all uh, plastic mulching. Uh, you know what it is? Yeah, it's like uh, bitter gold. Yeah. So this is very interesting bitter gold actually. Yeah. So many of uh, us, you know, are familiar 
And there is also another kinds of bitter goat which are, uh, because this bitter goat is not that popular, especially in India and Bangladesh. If we go to the market, if we see this kind of, nobody will buy it. So there are small one which are more more bitter than this one. This is comparably sweeter. That is better. That is better actually. The small one. Yes. 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 So that is uh, sweet gold or something. <laughs> okay. So uh, then uh, these are all pictures uh, from Chiang Mai area. And sex hormone trap. We have also used this technology. This is again. It's not a new one. Okay. But I was searching some of the literatures actually and then I have realized that this technology was again the most successfully used in Bangladesh. Okay. So the idea is uh, again yesterday I have also uh, told that nowadays we are trying to minimize the use of chemicals. And chemicals, one of the largest chemicals we are using in actually crop protection. Right? The similar way we eat medicine we also have to provide medicine to the crop no? for make it healthy. So, and <clears throat> so sex pheromone, uh, many of you are uh, familiar or at least you have seen in some pictures. Okay, so the idea is, uh, is very, you know, uh, uh, novel actually. And then the price wise is very cheaper. Okay, so these types of bottle you cut in the middle and then you put a table here. Okay. And then this actually uh, is a pheromone. So it produces uh, smell, aroma. Right? So inside that uh, tablet there are aroma of the female. Okay. And then the male thinks there there is something, you know, inside, let's go inside. And then as soon as they go inside, they're in problem. Okay. And then here uh, we have soap water and then as, as soon as they go and then they fall in soap water their wings become heavier they cannot fly and they die okay so this idea is simple but it was not that easy to synthesize that chemical pheromone chemical okay so the first work actually was started with uh, uh, eggplant fruit and shoot borer many of you if you go to visit vegetable market, you know, in Thailand it will be difficult to find, but if you go to your countries, you know, then you will see that brinjal is one of the largest, uh, or again in cotton also, you know, we use insecticide a lot, because this particular borer, you know, this is an insect, it makes holes inside the fruit of brinjal and takes shelter inside. So it does not matter if you are spraying from outside. So farmers, they use even five, six times with very high dose of insecticide, you know. And then the, the insect remains inside and happily enjoying the life. The same thing also happens in cotton also. Okay, so this is one of the uh, <clears throat> first work uh, was done. The female sex pheromone of eggplant, fruit and shoot borer. This picture was taken from Bangladesh. There are many different types of sex pheromone trap. And then there are also specification. So if you go, that's what I was very much impressed, you know, uh, to go to a very remote area of southern Bangladesh. And I was uh, very much amazed to see. And then there are different types of insect actually you can target and you can successfully control. Okay. Many of you will not be interested, those who are not from agriculture area. Yeah, so when I was traveling, you know, I have taken this picture, I think in 2014, and this is the cucurbit, uh, pumpkin, right? Many of us, we like pumpkin to eat. But pumpkin also, you know, uh, <coughs> has the same, same problem. So they have a fruit fly. Okay, mango also, many of you, if you are familiar, go to the mango orchard, you will see that very small, small fly, you know, they are roaming around. So their main intention is to make hole inside the fruit. So the similar way, you know, uh, the cucurbit, for example, pumpkin, you know, bottle gourd, many cucurbit is family vegetables, so they attract a similar type of insect. So when they make hole, and then, you know, 
it becomes rotten very fast. And then when I was traveling in the very rural area in, in southern Bangladesh, I have seen that you know they are growing pumpkin, no chemicals at all. You know, and then you can see this is the pheromone fryer they are using. Okay. So one here, one there, all here. So it is uh, very good to see actually. You know? uh, and then this kind of whatever I have seen, you know, uh, Bangladeshi farmers, you know, they are far far ahead. In, in, in because that's what we say that yeah technology is available but whether the farmers are ready to accept right so if you <clears throat> that's what we have you know realized so if especially for Bangladeshi farmers it was not or it was not any difficulty we did not have to face any difficulty to convince the farmers whether you are going to use this technology or not they are very happy you know uh, but in Nepal no in Cambodia forget. Okay. So that's what in Bangladesh, you know, uh, uh, they are now self-sufficient in food production. You can imagine there's a very small area, right, with 60 million, 160 million uh, population. Okay, so these are same pictures. And then also this, uh, we now using a lot, especially uh, in organic vegetable production, okay. So this is uh, Yulo <coughs> frap. The idea is nothing. So you have a uh, paper, Yulo paper, and then there is glue here. So when the insect uh, try to pass, so they are stick here, you know, stick here, and then they die. So you cannot control 100%, but the idea is to minimize uh, the population. Okay. And then this is picture from, again, from Chiang Mai, Thailand. So we are talking about integrated pest management. Why yellow color? Attract. If red there? Red, yeah, I cannot give you the answer. Because, so no, they have, questions. no, this is, this is uh, color-wise, I think. Uh, there should be some light or yes. compound lights. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But whatever they have seen, you know the answer, yes. Yeah. Yellow color, yeah. Because if you saw in light graph, some of the, this is also old technology in light graph, most of the insects in light, yeah, at night. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, okay, I'll ask you an example. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't tell you a question now. Yeah, I'm so maybe now. some of the insects are color blind, right? Yes, I don't know you now. Yeah, but the, the thing is, you know, many of human also, it's not insect, we also have the same, uh, same, same problem. Many of but us, if I tell you to, Differentiate the color properly, you cannot. You find the answer, why yellow color? I'm not asking yellow color they are attracting, I know that. Yeah. But why yellow color? Why yellow color? There are many colors, right? So you have to find Yeah, this is one color. good question actually. Why yellow color? Yeah. And then some of other technology in is uh, because Bangladesh, again, uh, example many times, trail pump, so uh, pumping water. Okay, so. Uh, this is a very good thing. Now this is obsolete, so nobody is using because farmers they do not have time. Also, there. Bicycle. Yeah, bicycle is there. So yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Warmi Yeah. So this one also, you know, very uh, economic uh, technology, but it is not for larger area. If you are growing, so if you go to Bangladesh or many Nepal or many countries, so. Uh, the farmers they grow home garden, right? So home garden, <clears throat> you will see that you know very close to your house, the small area of land where farmers they grow some vegetables. For example, you know for their uh, daily use. So you can actually use this kind of uh, bicycle pump, you know, uh, to put water in your uh, vegetable. This looks like going office. And <laughs> this looks like going office. Yeah. Yes. But the price is, I think, uh, many farmers from Nepal actually, when they came here for AAT for training, they bought it actually. I think the price is like $40, $30, $40, right? So and then to, they took it back. So this uh, picture uh, is from Nepal. So one farmer, a progressive farmer, so he actually installed that uh, in his, uh, in his uh, field. Uh, vegetable here, the uh, large area of a homestead vegetable garden, and then he pumps water to his uh, garden. Okay, so here we are not talking about very high fi technology, very crude actually. This 
kind of technology, you know, but again it helps. Yeah, so these are some of the farming we are now richer than the richer code we have seen before. Yes, again, you know, we are talking about incubation. So if you go to Bangladesh, you will get all the examples. How you can maximize, you know, the productivity, efficiency, whatever you call it. Okay. So, and then these are all, you know, very remote farmers. So, and then the, because we always say that necessity is the mother of invention. And there is the best example. So if we need it, we will do it. Yes, so we also tried the similar concept in Cambodia, but except his nice smile, we did not get anything, right? We only got, because the farmers were very happy, you know, when we invest so much money, you know, just idea integrated farming, so he gave us a very good smile, but we did not generate a single piece of data. Yeah, that's the thing. Okay, but at least uh, I can show the picture. So that's the advantage. There are some banana beer. Oh, banana, yeah. So that was the idea. Okay, so we put fish, you know, and then we can use the water in, in uh, fruit or some vegetables, but uh, nothing was there. The idea was very good integrated farming. So the water is there, farmers can raise uh, some fish, you know, because now protein is deficiency. Dr. Ronnie already mentioned it. So, but the idea did not work. You know, we spent lots of money. But data-wise, zero. Yeah, okay. Thank you. <laughs>